Hi everyone, Vicki Verley here. We're going to take a look at the full moon on July 31st, 2015. It's 6.43 a.m. Eastern, and it's a blue moon. It's a, and it's a rare occurrence. Therefore, the saying, uh, once in a blue moon, because it doesn't happen very often. And what that means is that there's two full moons in the, in the same month. It's not colored blue or anything crazy like that. But boy, there's just so much. Uh, I'm recording this on the 24th. So tomorrow Venus starts retrograde. And it'll be retrograde at the and in the 25th. It'll be retrograde at the time of this full moon. Uh, and while we're still on Venus, later that day it goes back into Leo. So it's it's at zero at the time of the, the exact time of the full moon. But within a few hours, it's going to retrograde back into 29 Leo and be with uh, Jupiter. What's well, with Jupiter now? I mean, they're only a couple degrees out. But there's so much things happening between... I want to quickly run over a few of those. Then we have a Mars square Uranus exact on uh, the 26th, or the 25th as well, the day Venus goes retrograde. So that's going to be crabby, bitchy day, probably. Tomorrow. It's actually tomorrow. And then Uranus goes retrograde. And it will be retrograde at the time of this reading. And the Uranus is going retrograde on the 26th at 6.38 a.m. Eastern. And then, there's what else was happening? Oh yeah, later that day, Venus goes retrograde. And then the next day after this, or a couple days later, on August 2nd, well, at 1.53 a.m., so I'm sure it'll be happening on the 1st in a lot of places on August 1st, um, Saturn goes direct after being retrograde. So there's everything's changing. Everything's going direct and going retrograde and all the planets are like changing motion in, in this little short span of time. And um, it, look at the way these lines are, as I always do, the, the aspect lines. Maybe I'll blow them up real big. Pull them over here. You know, look at these things. They are as if, it's, it's as if they're, it's topsy-turvy or if it's off-center. You know, it reminds me of... Uh, the Earth is actually wobbles on its axis. I don't know why that uh, that came to mind, but it does, and it reminds me of that. Like it's trying to find a foundation, and it's wobbling. It's like stumbling back and forth. It's going, you know, all over the place, and um, it may be hard. It may be hard to get your footing. It may be difficult for people to get, find their footing. You know, during these couple, this uh, few days before and after this um, full moon here. Uh, the actual full moon point is at 7 degrees Aquarius. Of course, pose the sun at uh, 7 Leo, which is always a full moon thing. So uh, it's Aquarian in nature, too, which is also, you know, uh, electric um, movement. You know, it's not... Uh, Aquarius is a fixed sign, but it's very much about movement, and things cha it's changeable, it's, it's malleable, it's electric. It's um, and Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. That's the full moon point is in Aquarius. We have Uranus rules over Aquarius, is making this big square with Mars too. And um, is anything doing anything else? Oh, it's trining uh, something. I have it trining. Well, it's trining Mercury. Am I looking at the right thing? Yeah, it's trining Mercury. They have it as. So where's that at? Uh, Mercury is at 16. Well, it certainly is trining Mercury. You know, so. That's positive. I mean, there could be communication. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but there could be like earthquakes going on this week. I hate to say it, but that's what it feels like to me. Like everything's, there's, and it feels like there could be all these different gravitational pulls going on back and forth and back and forth and things shifting and like we can't get on solid ground. You know, we can't get on solid ground. And what else was Uranus doing anything with? You know, just trying to the ascendant and that's it. Saturn squares Venus and Saturn squares Jupiter. Yeah, those are some big things. And these are at these critical degrees, too. I mean, Venus later in the day will be at 29 uh, Leo again, Regulus. I discussed that last time about how that can be overblown ego and feeling like I'm superior, or I'm the supreme ruler over everybody and everything. Um, and squaring Saturn is not going to, you know, it's not going to fly. It almost seems like Saturn could be the basis of this. You know, this could be the foundation here. This could be where... Um, we find our solid ground somehow. Well, the positive side of Saturn is endurance. It it is grounded energy. It is earth energy. It is, um, you know, it's kind of nose to the ground stone, uh, grindstone. You know, it's kind of like it's a work thing. It's work. Um, 
it is kind of playing by the rules and trying to get to in you know get to the top of the heap and be successful and things like that but Saturn is foundations as I say this all the time it's this old adage of how Saturn rules the bones in your body and if you didn't have your bones in your body you'd be a big lump of flesh laying on the ground so you need foundation you need structure you need bones to get around in this world you know there has to be a foundation there has to be a structure that's really the strongest uh, thing that I'm getting from this. I need to move this uh, thing back a little. It's not in the best spot for my arm. There we go. Um, one second here. Uh, is, this, is the full moon itself making any aspects? So that's in a wide conjunction with Ceres. I don't even know that I would really count that. And then also it's in a wide opposition to Mercury. I don't know that I would count that. What do we got going on here? The moon opposed the sun. Yeah. Um, Okay, this, you know, I realized that the whole time I never knew what these things are called, they're on here. It's a quincux, quincunx to Neptune. It's basically that they're, they're at the same degree here, you know, almost, seven and nine. So there's a Neptunian quality about it, too. Uh, Neptune is also, you know, it's, it's mutable, it's malleable. And things are going into the mutable signs. That's another big thing that's happening. I mean, it's not right away, but the nodes are sort of going to get into Virgo. Um, what else is going to... All this Venus is going to move into Virgo. All this stuff's going to move into Virgo. Jupiter's going to move into Virgo um, August 11th, my mother's birthday of all days. And I forgot to mention it in every one of the tarot scopes. So I for totally forgot about it. So uh, if you watch the tarot scopes, if I were saying things about uh, Leo and Jupiter... Only till the 11th. Um, so it's going to, everything's like shifting into these mutable signs. The nodes are going to shift into Virgo. Jupiter's going to shift into Virgo. And, and there's going to be these other planets in Virgo. But also Saturn's going to go forward the next day. And in no time at all, it's going to be in Sagittarius. So we're shifting from these different energies, you know, where things are stable. I feel like immutable, it's going to be, it'll calm down a lot. But also, mutable is, you know, ready to do, uh, ready for change, ready in an instant to make a change. Uh, not fixed, you know, Scorpio is a fixed sign, Leo is a fixed sign. So some of these two big planets have been in fixed signs and squaring each other. And now we're going to all meet in, uh, we'll still be squaring each other. But we're going to meet, and the nodes are going to meet up with uh, Jupiter. I feel like with the nodes meeting up with Jupiter, I mean, that'll be a little ways that'll be a little ways off because the nodes are moving backwards most of the time. So it's going to start at 20, you know, 28, 29 Virgo. And of course, this will be zero Virgo. So, but they'll meet, they'll meet in the middle sometime. But the, just the energy is there of the Virgo. And the nodes are always aligning us with our, our life path. So this is kind of the last hurrah of the North Node in Libra these upcoming uh, weeks or months. Well, I do have my book here. I guess I could check. Uh, when the, when is that going to be? I think it's a little ways off yet. It might be a month or two out, but I'm going to take a quick look here. Uh, let's see where we at here. It's actually going to be in October. Well, it's going to be dipping in actually in September. Then October, it's really in Virgo, the nodes. So this is the last hurrah of this Libra. So it's almost like the last hurrah for, I think, the nodal cycle somewhere to like 18 to 20 years, for another 18 to 20 years. Uh, but it's like the last hurrah for this. It's like I want to say it's the last chance to make amends or to set things right or to balance things with the Libra energy because it's about the balance energy to get things balanced. And we've only got a couple more months here. And then, you know, this is all this karmic stuff with these 29s. Um, Saturn's rough energy and Saturn squares are rough energy, yes. But Jupiter's always a blessing. It's the great benefactor or, or the benefic or whatever. So um, there can be action for change with the blessings of Jupiter to long-standing, you know, Saturn type of things, you know. So it could be a positive thing is what I'm trying to get to. And I do say it over and over again, too, about squares make things happen. You know, you have these beautiful trines, and it's just like, oh, I had what a lovely day. And then the day just, you know, you don't get these, tr these squares are the catalyst to make things happen. You know, you need these conjunctions and these squares to really make things happen, and that's the truth. Uh, but anyways, also Pallas is here. Pallas is uh, squaring, or trining, excuse me, trining Mercury. And Pallas can be these flashes of brilliance. 
And Pallas is definitely a doer. And I find that, I feel like uh, Sagittarius, Pallas is nice in Sagittarius. I think there's like a kindred um, thing going on with them. Pallas Athena, she was the warrior. She did shoot bows and arrows. And she did, um, you know, she was uh, inventive. And I, I just feel like there's a kindredness to this energy. I think it's like a, it's, I think it's no, there's no official thing about it but I just feel like it's a good vibe you know it's in a it's a harmonious it's happy there um so it's inventiveness it's ideas it's um the mind the higher mind which is the ninth house which sag rules and it's trining up with mercury which is also mental mercury is the third house of mental you know uh learned things and and the ninth house is uh the higher octave of that so sag is the higher octave of uh Gemini or Mercury, you know, and it's Jupiter too. So it's, it all ties in here. So we've got this ninth house kind of energy going on, this communication, this learning, this enlightenment. It's totally about enlightenment and rising to another level is, is uh, clear to like, there could be some major enlightenment that happens here for everybody. Isn't it our third part in this? Uh, oh, it's kind of out on now. It's a little bit far out on either of these, you know, but there's, um, oh, here it is. Yeah, there is Vesta. What was I looking at? I was looking at Chiron. I have to get to Chiron because if I was looking at it, I'm supposed to talk about it, I think. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so there is a Grand Trine of Fire with Mercury, Pallas, Vesta. Vesta is, uh, you know, so I would say that this energy could also be like solving problems at home. You know, look in your own backyard or your own neighborhood uh, get, get to, you know, it's like that can't see the forest for the trees. And that can be Virgo energy too. When we're talking about all this stuff moving into Virgo, Virgos sometimes can't see the forest for the trees, you know, and Virgo is a time of being really hardworking, attention to detail, you know, um, Libras can be the Libra energy that's going to be going into Virgo. We can go from, you know, Libras can be a little bit, like I said about the trines, you know, oh, it's just, everything's beautiful and a little bit um, rose-colored glasses, you know, where Virgos are going to examine every detail. We're not going to throw, you know, just put a, I keep wanting to say like a loose uh, coat of paint over something. I keep saying like brush strokes with rainbows and butterflies and stuff. <laughs> and Virgos are like, no, no, no. And we're going to turn up for every stone and dig up everything and get everything just right, set things right. And, uh, so the Jupiter's going to be in there, too. So that's going to be the new energy. But the old energy of Libra, yeah, it's being fair. It's being kind to others, too. But again, it just can be. A, and I love Libras. My daughters are Libras. But it's like a lazy Libras is the old thing they used to say. It can just be kind of, oh, you know, and it's, there's a time and place for lazy. You can't work yourself to death, either. I mean, I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. But, oh, it's just everything is beautiful. And we'll just overlook everything and... You know, just live in a bubble or a cloud kind of sometimes, you know. And so we, we're going to come out of that energy and down into the earthy energy of the Virgo energy is coming up. We Speaking of this, there is an op opposition to Neptune with uh, Juno. I still feel real strong like that's that mirror thing, you know. I think the mirrors could be really clear for those of us who are aware of it just in uh, our life in an esoteric sense of how things that come up and are thrown in our face are, you know, uh, a mirror of something about ourselves. And um, secondly, I, I want to go back to that Louise Hay thing of, you know, loving yourself, of doing that mirror exercise, of staring at yourself in the mirror and saying, you love yourself. You know, you love, I love myself, I love myself. Um, and we still do have the Chiron opposed Lilith, but was Chiron doing anything else here? Chiron's charting the Mars. Hmm. And then, uh, is it the, I wouldn't say it's really an orb with this Saturn, but it's definitely trying, Mars is an orb to try and Chiron, and Mars is an orb to try and Saturn. Though, they're both, uh, uh pivoting on this Mars and Cancer. Uh, which again is not the best placement for Mars energy. It can't really express itself. It's like it's in quicksand or mud. You know, Mars wants to go, 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 do, do, do. And it's like, you can, and this sign needs too watery. You can't. You know, you can't. Well, you're not going to get past old man Saturn, almost, I want to say. 
You know, that's the way I'm seeing it. It's just like, oh no, you're not just going to fly right past here. We're going to, you know, we're going to deal with stuff. We're going to deal with stuff. Because that's another thing, you know, where Libras can be really laissez-faire at times, the, the Mars energy is just go, 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 and don't even stop to look at anything, because I'm just always go, 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 speed, 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 go, go, go. So slow down. It's a time to slow down. It's a time to deal with uh, some of the harder issues. But ultimately, to have a healing with Chiron. I know it's, it's, I say this all the time, you know, Chiron with the healing. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been doing these past life videos and I'm really I'm really enjoying it. People are liking it too. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback, a lot of long email letters about how I hit on different things for them. It's really so I'm getting a lot of satisfaction out of it too. But um you know I'm feeling karma karma chiron is uh karmic and it's what we came to heal in this life. You know, I, I always um uh, I didn't have a good understanding of it. And somebody told me one time I read the Rainbow Bridge and I read all these works that were out back in like the eighties or so uh, and I kind of wasn't really paying attention to Chiron, but somehow it ended up back in, I put, putting it back into the charts, and I've been watching it, and I've been paying attention to it. And what I'm finding, uh, somebody said something to me that really rang, rang a bell, and it, made it, it rang true, I should say, and that was Chiron is where you keep wounding yourself over and over again. And I think that is very true. Chiron is where we keep wounding ourselves over and over again. But you can take that even to a higher level in lifetime after lifetime. And what, what behaviors and what things have we come to heal? So I've been including this Chiron in, in these past life readings just as I've, I've started doing them these last couple of weeks. And uh, I'm really getting a lot out of it this way. So I think it is a, a place we can really go and see these deep things that we are look, working on on the soul level on the soul journey. Of course the nodes are included in Saturn and there's lots of things that I look at, but I'm I'm finding out more and more that this Chiron, this really is a thing, you know, this really is a thing. It really is a an esoteric, a, a karmic point to look at. So as the grand collective, you know, I don't know, Pisces well one of the things that when I thought of it just now, this just came, uh Pisces is Neptune is uh well how are we fooling ourselves, but also our reliance on drugs. And pharmaceuticals. I mean, we are we are very much, and I think people born like in my era, you know, in the '60s, uh, with the Pluto Jup or Pluto uh, Uranus conjunction, you know, that uh, in Virgo, and here's this Virgo energy coming up again. I think that we are really keen on not wanting to just pop pills all the time. I think our parents' generation and even the one generation before us were big pill poppers. And on, you know, drugged up on a lot of pharmaceuticals all the time, and then you know it almost seems without fail, you know, uh, you hear later on that you know there's some lawsuit because some horrible thing happened with these drugs. And I, of course, some drugs are needed and good, and modern medicine is a wonder and it's a beautiful thing. And I don't want to go back to living in the days when without modern medicine, but I think we need to maybe think more about that, you know, before we just rush and pop a pill right away. And also, you know, with the children, too, boy, you know, everybody's on Ritalin, and, you know, I think that's just uh, a little bit much, you know, and I think a lot of them, uh, there's other things going on, you know, with these children. I think they're old souls, and I think they have, um, a lot of them are psychic. You might, you might want to watch that Psychic Kids video. I don't want to get too far off on a tangent here, uh, but if you might want to watch that Psychic Kids video. But don't be so quick to dole out drugs, and, uh, and too, like antidepressants, I've been kind of blue lately. And, you know, when I was thinking about taking an antidepressant, I'm like, no, I don't think I want to. You know, I just don't think I... you got to feel your feelings. you got to feel your feelings. Life's not always happy. It's not always... We, there's ups and downs, and you've got to recognize these things. And I'm not saying anybody who's... I'm not downing that either. I know plenty of people that are on them for a while, and it really helps them, and it's, that's a good thing. But is that always where we got to go? Right to that. You know, let's just pop a pill. Don't feel our feelings. Don't listen to our body. Don't get in touch. You know, Pisces is this deep in touch, you know, being deep and in touch with everything. Don't go, just pop a pill and try to ignore it. That would be more Aries energy. Ignore it and on like that. And then it puts you in the Libra state. And the South Node is Aries too. Uh, but it puts you in that Libra state 
of that extreme Libra state. Of course, I'm not saying all Libras are airheads by any means. Like I said, I, I like Libras. Libras are nice people, and I like them. And by the way, I like Cancers, too. I, I said Caribbean bitchy a couple times in some videos, and I know, as a matter of fact, my kid's father was a Cancer. I've, I've had long relationships with Cancerians, so I, I, I do like them, and I do vibe with them. But that's how I know they can be crabby and bitchy. <laughs> but I, I had to get that in. Huh? But no, I live. Uh, cancers are really good people. I like cancers a lot. So I, don't, I mean, I, everybody's got their good and bad points, and and that's what it's, you know. All this stuff is. It's planetary energy. It's how you use the energy. It all has a positive use and it all has a negative use. And then, you know, in these this grand trines here. So that that's where we can go to find flow, and that's where we can go to maybe find harmony and peace. And that, and they'll be there to help to get through it, you know. Just like Chiron, maybe these old wounds in your chart that you're healing and healing, you know. Jupiter's where you have your blessings, so there's always other things. There's an, it's not all like you're you're meant to have a life of suffering and it's all going to be terrible arguments and, you know. There's always a way. There's it's it's about growth, you know. And a lot, it's mainly about growth, I would say. Okay, so full moon in Aquarius. Um, Uranian energy, many of us are going to be wanting to be free of, it's about freedom, it is about breaking free of old paradigms, but I think while these things are here, there's still just a little bit more to do, a little more work to do, and for some, some of us, maybe we do have to work within the existing structure. You know, it's great to be off the grid and everything, and that's all cool. You know, I totally want to get some wind things for my house and stuff, you know. But um, for the time being, we still have to work within the structure. And um, maybe not to be too far out there. Be grounded. Find yourself, your footing. Find our footing. This is a time of finding our footing in a, in, in a time where a lot of things are really shifting and changing, as I said at the onset of the video. Uh, yeah, I brought up that past life thing, but I'm so stoked about it. I'm really liking doing it, and I'll tell you what, I'm getting so much uh, positive... Ah, uh, something happened bad there. I'm getting so much uh, positive feedback. Well, I have one more to show. I don't know what happened with that one. Uh, for some reason, it's gone off the screen. But what it is, yeah, I'm just like drawing pictures and talking. I'm doing just like I talk on this chart, but I'm... And I pick up... I've been picking up so many cool stuff. And it's been insightful for me, as well as, like I said, the people who are ordering them. So that's available on my page. If you go to my main page over here, Rock and Roll Prophetess, you go into that About section, it takes you to the main order page, which is part of the tapestry of, like, mandalas. And you scroll down, and it has all my stuff. And at the very bottoms, it has all the readings. I don't know why this is blowing up so big. All the readings, and uh, they're still doing the private sessions one-on-one, -on -one, but the Soul's Journey readings, you know, you don't have to wait for an appointment. That's another cool thing about it. And I can do them when I'm in the zone. You know, I, I, try, I can get myself in the zone, and I can, you know, I'll always be able to work it out. But sometimes when I live appointments, I'm not always in the mood, but I, I'll get there for you. I'll, I'll do my very best, and I've been doing it so long I can get there. But, you know, with these things, I only do them when I'm really stoked up to do them. So I think they're kind of even better that way, too. I can kind of do them not at my leisure. I mean, you know, I still have that Capricorn workaholic tendency. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty on the ball about getting them done. And don't forget another thing about the Tapestry of Life mandalas that I do. Or you can order the Universal mandalas. And or my tarot book and my tarot deck. I've always got all these things going on. And uh, on my channel, too, be sure to check out Inside the Creative Spirit. This is something I've been wanting to do for a few years. And I'm finally getting it rolling. I'm a little behind on my editing, so I may not get one up this week. And uh, But it's real interesting. I had some audio problems. And there's a couple that have some real bad audio problems I might have to redo, but I got that kind of worked out now, I think, and um, and if you are a creative person and would like to come on and be a part of the conversation, I would love to have. Got to get some feminine energy. Seems like only men are responding, so let's get some of these creative women out there uh, while we still have this Cancerian energy uh, to come on and talk to me about it, and any, any form of creativity. You know, it doesn't have to be... Um, music or art or what you know anything any type of creativity okay so here it is the blue moon <laughs> i just heard that old really old song it might be patsy klein or somebody somebody from that era blue moon i saw you stand in alone or something I can't, with no regrets of my own <laughs> okay i'm talking about going off the deep end or getting too far out there let's not get too far out there 
what the Aquarius moon. Okay, so find your ground, find your, batten down the hatches, find your foundation as we go through these shifting and changing sign, times. Remember that you are love and beauty incarnate, and I'll speak to you soon.